Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Sherman, dear ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present in the ENO this year. Our presentation today is about the endoscopic tympanoplasty, a step-by-step -step guide. This is an instruction uh, session led by uh, myself, Abdurrahman Ibrahim, an ENT consultant in Lincoln uh, Shire Hospital, and my colleague, uh, Ahmed Bayoumi, uh, ENT registrar in Lincoln Shire. Ahmed, you can handle the presentation by yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, we will start our presentation about endoscopic tympanoblasty step by step. Uh, first of all, uh, our aim of this instructional presentation is to provide an essential way to perform a safe and successful endoscopic tympanoblasty procedure. These are the topics we're going to go through, starting by the principles, challenging graft materials, and eventually with operative steps. So let's start now with the principle that we build up our perspective about the endoscopic tympanoplasty. Mr. Brahim, uh, do you see that there is a significant difference be between endoscopic and microscopic view during the procedure? So first of all, the, there is no competition between the endoscope and the microscope. The, sometimes they are complementary to each other. But we're going to go through what is the beneficial from having the endoscope as a tool with us. It's one of the tools that uh, has been uh, uh, over years and years uh, developed, and uh, there is more development in the, those um, endoscopes uh, in the last years. From Simply, this is a picture that shows you the same legion, the same patient in the same day. Um, and I've used the microscope and I have used the endoscope to show you that um, on the right hand side, as you can see, this is the corded tympani, this is the cholesterol sac, this is the um, rooted, um, uh, the long process of uh, incus, the handle of the medius. But under the microscope, with the maximum um, uh, 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 zooming in, you can just nearly see the incus there um, and the, the core, the tympani, and the cholesterol. So it's, it's a better viewing, uh, wide angle viewing. This is the, the uh, difference between the microscope and the endoscope. So uh, I know you favor the endoscopic approach. Uh, in your opinion, what is the preference of endoscopic approach over the microscopic one? So it, it just, as you say, it's just, it's having advanced um, uh, 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 steps or, or, or uh, preference uh, because the endoscope in most of the time that are incision less, uh, in, but the microscope in most of the time they are within incision, either the post or the preauricular. Sometimes you use the a transcanal with the, the with the um, the uh, the uh, microscope, which is not the easy thing. From the pain uh, wise, I think so the, it's because there is less tissue dissection, so I think so it's more uh, or less pain for with the endoscope. No bandage. I don't uh, put uh, packs in most of the cases or a very small pack um, if you compare it to the uh, microscopic uh, pulse or uh, the uh, pre-auricular incision approach. That's brilliant. Uh, in general, how can we improve the view while performing the procedure, either endoscopic or microscopic? That's a good question as Ahmed, but as we mentioned before, we are not in a competition uh, with the microscope because um, you can get a better view with the microscope as the endoscope. You can use the endoscope itself as an auxiliary to the microscope. You can use the 30 degree for the endoscope for a wider view. Uh, I, can, uh, I can say that uh, a good hemostasis on both sides uh, or, or post uh, tools are very essential for the microscope or the endoscope as the ear is a, a tiny, tiny 
small um, uh, place to work in. Uh, some sutures uh, trimming the hair, as we can see later, is very helpful for the endoscope as well. That's fine. All of us know to perform a safe and successful procedure, we have to overcome the expected challenges, making sure we have the available facilities which we need to recognize it. So regarding the challenges, for sure, Mr. Ibrahim, everything has its pros and cons. Could you update us about the expected challenges of using endoscopy? So uh, yes, the, there is a bit of a challenging, if we can say that the single-handed um, tool because you use, you use the, um, one of your hands for uh, fixing the, the scopes yeah. um, and the other one is to work with. Uh, nowadays, I know there is, there is a handle um, that, that can fix the, your, the scope for you, but it's not, not the, the best tool um, up to now. There is also robotic uh, that can fix the, uh, the, the scope for yourself, but still um, in the, uh, the phase of development. Uh, the 2D uh, and the 3D. So the 2D is it mainly in the in the scope, but I think that, that the uh, the better view, the wide angle view, is with the scope makes the 2D is um, not a big issue. Hemostasis, as we, we used to say, the hemostasis is a problem in the microscope and the endoscope, but you can overcome it with a good anesthetist using the bludgets, the injections, and you can go through that. Uh, angle instruments are very useful for the endoscope to go around the corners and the reconstruction is a bit difficult, but still training and training uh, is very important for that. That's fine. So do you believe that all challenges regarding endoscopic approach could be coped by different means? Yes, for sure. That, that's, that's, that's for sure that you, you, that's we fine. can overcome it easily. That's fine. Because one of the most important options to make any procedure easier is an instrument. Mr. Ibrahim, can you go through uh, with us how you set up the theater for endoscopic ear surgery? So um, this is a picture uh, during the COVID, as you can see, I was using the faucet uh, air uh, purifier uh, because I haven't been fit with one of the, uh, the, uh, the FPP masks. So as you can see, I, I used to sit, I don't stand up. I, I preserve my legs uh, for my, the next coming years. I'm still young, but I think later it will be difficult to work uh, standing. Um, so I sit down uh, with an armchair, as you can see, facing the, the, um, the, uh, the uh, screen in front of me. The anesthesia is, uh, is just at the tail or the foot of the patient, which is the tail of the, uh, the table. Um, the, my assistant is just uh, facing me. Um, I, I, and this is the, the best set for myself, but there is a different set for different uh, uh, surgeons as well. Uh, I think so. There is a lot of instruments that you can use, uh, and there is um, there is no uh, um, uh, a good and a bad instrument. It's just what you need, really. Uh, and I, we can go through what we um, we need um, from the uh, useful tools. I think so. That the best uh, useful tool is the Thompson, which is the curved one the 90 degree and the 45 degree, which is very, very useful for the section uh, going around the corner. They cut uh, uh, the 45 and the 90 degree uh, angled one. I have used uh, only the um, suction uh, rosin knife, which is the Penti endoscopic instrument. I find it a bit difficult to use, but there is a lot of people that who like those uh, type, of, type of sets. So the Pinti um, endoscopic instrument is one of the things that can be useful as well. That's fine. The next point of discussion is the material of the graft. Graft collection is one of the main steps during endoscopic tympanoplasty, which we have a passion today to recognize your experience about it. Okay, so uh, I think so um, different materials to be used in grafting. I'll tell you my preference later, but there is, as you can see, there is an autograph, there is a homograph, there's xenographs, synthetics, 
uh, I think so the the, um, the autographs from the fascia cartilage and them are the most common thing. Um, the xenograft, which is based on the bovine or the um, the uh, the uh, pork or the prosin um, based, uh, is also one of the things that can be used. Uh, um, like the biodesign, for example, that I haven't used them uh, to be honest. The either the bovine or the the, the porcelain uh, type of uh, of grafting. The uh, also the alloderms, but I haven't used them. Why I really find it very useful is something called the ibidas, which is a synthetic materials, um, which is uh, from uh, Medtronic and Zomit. Uh, they are very useful to to be. Uh, Use as a supportive for your cart, the your pericondrium or the fascia graft. You can use them over the graft or under the graft to support the grafts, which are very useful. Um, and I've used them before. That's fine. Can you tell us more about the material you have been using actually for grafting? So I use the cartilage. Um, I'm fancy about the, using the cartilage and the pericondrium. Um, especially if this patient needs an ocicle pass, for example, can harvest a good uh, piece of cartilage, as you can see later. Uh, and as I said, it's one of the things that uh, can possess the infection. I know there is a, a debate regarding to this, but I think so. I believe that it's, it's a very useful um, um, materials and a good resistant uh, um, uh, material against the infection. It's fine, brilliant. Uh, moving to the steps of the procedure, can you simplify your expertise in this procedure by unveiling the order of the steps in your mind before running the procedure? Okay, um, so you need a good preparation for us. Uh, as we said, I oh, mentioned before, the, the uh, position of the patient, the uh, the analysis, uh, the hypertensive technique, the, your your uh, uh, assistant, all of this, uh, and then you prepare the ear well. Um, there is a different preparation for the ears. Um, I personally prefer to do a trimming of hair if there is a long hair. I use the uh, xylocaine adrenaline or the lignin plan for the injection. Um, I know some of my colleagues and myself as well, but I don't do it in a tympanoplasty. I do it if I'm going to do uh, um, some bony work uh, or there is a glossitoma, I put the uh, one in uh, 100,000 uh, adrenaline direct inside the canal. But in, in tympanoplasty, injection is only the thing. There, um, I think so the injection is simply is just to, around the corners, um, you, you can just inject uh, uh, inferiorly uh, and, and anteriorly, superiorly, just go around the corners uh, and inject as much as you can, but make sure that you not over inject. So the plebing or the collection of the injection can uh, cause a lot of problems uh, uh, anterior of the flap while you are levating the flap. Do you recommend the significant amount of injection? It's different from person to person, um, patient to patient. I would say that the, a two ligand span uh, for the panel pharmacy will be two on board, it will be enough. That's mean a four mil, but you can inject more if you want to do uh, more. And you recommend it to be distributed all over the corners or yes. significantly in one side? No, uh, mainly the posterior part, which is the elevation. But I would say yes. You, you um, distribution is 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 uh, is one of the things. Uh, I think so. There is also a thing that I used to do to prepare the ear, which is yeah. the sutures. You can see that the ear canal is two parts. Uh, one is the cartilaginous part, and the bony part. They are not in alignment with each other. So you yeah. can see that sometimes you have a, a bit of a hump or a pump inside the canal. You can align them and make them one line by pulling the cartilage outside and posteriorly. So putting a suture, I, I used to put a, a suture in the trachea and one in the, uh, one in the back in the uh, conchal part 
or the posterior part of the canal. Pull them out, make the canal, as you can see, wider and wider and preventing your staff from going in and out too much to clean the, the, your scope. Yeah, it's very challenging to get a clear view yes. while using an endoscopic approach, especially in restricted access cases. What's your advice to overcome this situation about from retraction of the pen? This is the this is the, the the important part of it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Technically, what's the first step you prefer to start with? So, um, as this is the we don't do incision. So the first step is the refreshment of the egg. So uh, simply mm -hmm. refreshment of the age of the perforation, it's 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 it's, uh, it's very important because um, as you can see, it's preventing the uh, the uh, the the skin to just go inside and makes uh, the an inward uh, or induced cholesteatoma. The uh, the second uh, important. Uh, Aim of it is just the it, the it helps that the a new um, and non fibrotic part of the drum uh, to creep over your graft. So um, that that's why. So just using a curved needle, as you can see, and just trim uh, the edge around. In this case, we, we trimmed only the interior part of it, as it, it's you can see, it's just a posterior um, uh, posterior perforation, but as you can see from the view, you can see the canal is a bit humpy and bumpy, but the, yeah. the best thing in the endoscope that you can overcome um, this hump and bumps easily. And you can see the, the, the whole age around. And this yeah. case will be with us. And you can see by the end how it's nicely, the graft is in, in place. Yeah. One of the crucial steps in the metoplasty is a successful elevation of the meter flap to achieve a bloodless field. Is there a definite technique to do could help or it varies from one case to the other? Yes, fashioning of the tympanometer flap is essential. I know there is uh, a lot of new techniques that like the butterfly, uh, the fat blocks, but this is not for the large perforation, as you can see. You need yeah. to elevate a good flap there. So in my um, way, I used to do a transverse incision, starting from the 12 o'clock up there, down to six o'clock down there. And I may extended it a bit uh, to the front. Um, uh, so uh, to just to, uh, to say, the, uh, up to nine o'clock, for example, but this depends on the size of the perforation. I do a, 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 a vertical incision with the blister knife, the first incision knife at the 12 o'clock. Let's see how this can be done. So this is a disposable at impanoplasty uh, knife, which I find it very, very useful as you, you know, Using the rosin knife um, a lot, uh, it, it started to to get um, bl bland and, and not sharp as as you it should be. So uh, I think so. That's the, um, the the using this disposable one is is very useful. As you can see, the transverse one and then the vertical one with the first incision knife, and then uh, simply using the rosin knife or the fish knife, um, according to what you, to, you prefer. Um, and the important part, I think so, it's the how to stop the bleeding. So you're using yeah. the pleasures with the one in uh, uh, a 10,000 admin is very, very useful. Uh, and I think so the, it's a bit um, difficult to, for your assistants because they have to count all of the pleasures, but it, they are very, very useful. You can see you can use them even for that section, as you can see here. Just clean up, and you can see the sutures here making much difference when you go in and out with the scope. So after you just elevated it, I don't do a cut at six o'clock. In this case, I just um, go a bit to nine o'clock, 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I can, yeah. um, um, can, can uh, oh, sorry, to the three o'clock up there. So I can, I can reach the interior uh, part of the perforation. I use a blunt uh, gemic uh, or um, the, um, uh, the uh, drum elevator to elevate the, um, the, the annulus at the start here at the ossicles. But later I use the sharp um, the second knife uh, to get the, the fibrous annulus outside. And as you can see, when I'm out, it's very easily to go in and out with those switches. You can see the cord there nicely. You can see the uh, um, also the um, the uh, ossicles. Uh, this is um, I'm testing the tensor tympani uh, now, uh, and the uh, the, um, the uh, also the uh, moving the handle to see the ossicular movements. So this is the next step. So depend on that if there is a, any ossicular station. In this case, you can see there is a very small membranous uh, uh, long process that uh, could be uh, um, uh, um, uh, replaced uh, by ossicular plasty or using some uh, board cement to uh, correct this uh, uh, gap in the, uh, between the ossicles. That's fine. It's worthy to know if you use a certain and popular instrument in the elevation of tympanometer flap, which make it easier and to avoid the expected bleeding. Yeah, as, as we mentioned, the pleasure to the, uh, the hypertensive techniques. Yeah, as, as he's been mentioned before in the- Yeah, that's fine. And let's say if the field is bloody, how could we deal with this uh, at the time? As I said, Ahmed, that the, using the pledget with the 100 uh, adrenaline ask the NEs to control the blood pressure. Those are the main, yeah. um, the language between you and the NEs is very important. Yeah, very fine. Thank you. Uh, as you kindly mentioned before about the different material of grafting, could you show, could you show us how you get it? So, um, this is just a small video uh, how uh, the, uh, showing you how to harvest the um, the, uh, the, uh, the cartilage. So just what we do, just uh, um, a small incision, uh, a few millimeters from the tragus uh, and just uh, a vertical, uh, sorry, a transverse cut in the skin uh, dissection of the, 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 the pericondrium from the skin. Uh, and, you, and as you can see, just uh, go through the other side of the cartilage, uh, dissected the, the cartilage and the pericondrium from the other side. The important part is to leave three to four millimeters from the tragus uh, to avoid the disfigurements of the, the tragus. And it's, 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 it, you can just go around. And this is, this is a blanty, there is a blanty of cartilage and the pericondrium in this side. So you can use one side or, of the, uh, the, the cartilage and pericondrium on one side, and then um, use the other pericondrium to, uh, for uh, if you find there is any defects uh, around. That's fine. So we, uh, you used to keep the pericondrium, uh, pericondrium in both sides? Yes, in one side, yes. In, okay. uh, insertion of the graft needs accumulative surgical skills to be able to be done in a proper way. Can you share us your experience, which could help uh, while performing this step? Okay, so uh, there is a different uh, types of, of graft. So upon the type of the graft, the way to insert it will, will be different. So using a pericondrium is different from using the uh, cartridge. I used to put the graft medial to the ossicles, the handle, I don't like to put it laterally um, for a reason. I'm not saying that this is not uh, correct. This is a correct and there is a different people um, or many uh, surgeons do this and put it lateral to the ossicles, but they have to dissect the skin over the handle uh, and make sure that there is no skin left behind, okay? Uh, and this is usually done in, um, in a cholesteatoma surgery uh, or 
a large total perforation. At that stage, yes, you can do it lateral because there is no support for your craft medially. But in, in most of the cases, there is a support medially, so you just put the, the, the graft medium to the handle, as you can see here. So what you can see here, I'm testing the mobility of the ossicles. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use a perichondrium. In the case of a perichondrium, I used to put a gel form inside the middle here just to support my graft. So what I do is just put the graft around and fill the middle ear later, uh, as, as you've seen with the, with the uh, gel form or any gelatinous uh, materials, um, uh, just the gel form is um, just a company uh, product name. Uh, uh, just to, um, uh, again, to emphasize, we don't have any disclosure uh, and there is no uh, interest uh, for saying any of those companies' names. So, and then you put the, the uh, gel form or the spongy uh, forms uh, at the end and just some ointment on that. You don't need to do much. Uh, and so no pack needs to, to be removed. It's a bit different from the uh, cartilage, which is usually for a larger perforation. I prefer the cartilage. Um, so it's the same, uh, just going around, elevating the, the as you can see, elevating the, uh, the the skin around. Uh, this is you can see the stash and tube. You can see the handle. So um, just gently insertion of the the cartilage, uh, just medial to the um, to the handle of the milius. Uh, you can use the needle, the second knife to adjust your your graft as well. So make sure yeah. that everything is in in place. And once the graft is in place, just you can just put the gel form within your clamp again in place. So the decision of to be medial or, or, or lateral to the ossicles, it depends on the current situation of the, of the procedure yes. itself. Uh, I think the only indication if it's a cholesteatoma with a large uh, defect or a subtotal or total perforation. But there is a surgeon that who likes to dissect the skin over the handle and put it lateral to the face. Which is okay. I don't think that this is um, a, a big issue or uh, a point of a debate. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Do you perform the cycloplastry primary and why? Uh, I believe no. If I'm going to do a tympanoplasty, I'll do uh, the, and, and need with it. With it and, Part of it, a meringoplasty and osteoplasty. I prefer to do the uh, osteoplasty in the second stage, not the first stage. Unless yeah. that it's a febrile uh, condition, like a small perforation posteriorly, um, yes, I will do it. But I prefer to put the, uh, the cartilage in place, make it a uh, uh, good establish in place, and then put the procedure, the procedure uh, below the, the established. Uh, okay. Now, uh, regarding the age, do you see that there is a special preparation should be taken in, in consideration when we gonna perform the endoscopic tympanoplasty in children? Uh, okay. So um, from the surgical technique, there is no difference. I'll show you that there is no difference. But yes. from uh, picking up patient, the pediatric cases, I think so. It's um, you can do it as early as possible. Six years old is good. Um, uh, around six to nine is okay. Make sure that the the child doesn't have adenoids, and they uh, and he, he, if he have had his adenoids removed, that will be better. If you have the adenoid, if you haven't. Just uh, I'd prefer to do adenoidectomy before going to the tympanoplasty. But from the surgical point of view, I don't think so there is any difference. I'll show you two uh, videos uh, regarding to this. So this is a tympanoplasty using the, um, the perichondrium, which is what we have uh, shown you before. Um, and this is the, uh, the, after the injection, you just do the tympanometer flap um, and then elevate the tympanometer flap, as you can see, going in, 
testing the obstacles, putting the craft, and just return the, um, the flap again in position using the spongy uh, material and close the ear. So this is an adult tympanoplasty. This is a pediatric tympanoplasty. Yeah. Will not be, there will not be much difference. The, again, the vertical incision, the, um, uh, the, um, uh, and the horizontal incision going inside uh, the middle ear cavity, a, a good checking. Um, um, it's just because it's a subtotal perforation, I prefer to go to, to go anteriorly, more anteriorly, so I can see my graft in position. Uh, insertion of the graft, make sure that the graft in place. And just, uh, set, yeah. And then put the gel form. So in, from the surgical point of view, no, there isn't much difference and you cannot see um, a difference um, in surgical technique between the PEDS and the adults. But I think the preparation and the picking of the patient uh, uh, um, is, is very, very important. Um, However, technically are the same. Similar. Yeah, technically are the same, but as yeah. I said, um, picking up the age, um, uh, the, also the, the, the child himself is, is very important. Um, so um, um, it's, you, you, you have to inform the child about that this is an operation, a little bit of pain, not, not, not as much. Um, there will be, uh, your ears will be um, blocked for a while. Uh, you have to be patient and uh, don't pull, don't do, uh, you know, this, this is not easy. Uh, so you need uh, a child with a, um, a good, uh, I don't want to say uh, anything. Um, I cannot say, just a cooperative child uh, to, yeah. yeah. Um, I think so um, from the, what we have uh, mentioned before, we have gone through the steps. But still, difficulty is difficulty. So there is a difficult cases that could be uh, challenging a bit. Um, so uh, one of the things is that a bit challenging is the humpy canal. You can see here in this case that the there is an anterior hump. You can you can see the anterior part of the the, the graft. Uh, the sorry, the the perforation. I've seen this lady in the um, in the clinic with the microscope, and and I can see almost half of the drum, despite the I've tried to ask the patient to tilt her head, um, go forward, uh, bending with um, a bit. But it was very very difficult to be honest uh, to get the um, the the interior bit of the drum which I think see that this scope is nicely can overcome this. I'm a bit away, but I'll show you by the end how we can see the whole drum in. She have a, a little bit of a collection of a skin inside the canal as well, but it's the same way, injection, um, go um, just make sure that the, you have done a good refreshment. In this case, because the, 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 there was the, the skin was craving or, uh, or robing the handle. So I started to clean the skin medial, um, from the medial surface of the, uh, of the handle, as you can see. But as you can see the anterior part, of the, the perforation now. So make sure that there's no skin left behind. Um, I was uh, also checking the, 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 as you can see, the, the, the handle was severely retracted in. So what I've done is that, I've just uh, done a release of the tensor tympani. And, and now you can see the interior bit of the, the, the perforation. You can see even this national tube here. So yeah. it, it's nice for you. Uh, I think Good for so. you. <laughs> yes. I, it, it was very difficult. And I think so if you're going to do this case under the microscope, uh, it will not be easy at all. Yeah. So, Unlike uh, what happened in the clinic, you didn't find all of that in the clinic. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then uh, just go around, make sure the, the skin is being taken. 
Um, yeah. This is the, I, I didn't find my um, um, disposable tympanoplasty knife, but I find there is um, one of the iris um, uh, uh, keratotomy knife, the, the, the ophthalmology use it with a, a 60 degree angle, which was really useful to be honest. So I've used them. Um, um, uh, I know it, it was it's a bit large, but it wasn't bad to be honest. And they are very sharp. They're not like our Rosen knife that has been used several mm -hmm. times and not sharp. And then the same thing, just the um, after you're doing the uh, horizontal incision, do the vertical incision at 12 o'clock. Um, go and just pushing with the small pledges and nicely find the, the, your way in to the um, through the uh, ribbonous notch there. And then the, you can see the uh, I, I find the uh, the um, the fibrous analyst elevating the fibrous analyst. Yeah, this is the nice inky distributed joint. And and this is what I've meant, said said before that the using this type of suture are very useful um, to pull your canal out, uh, so it's e you can easily get them. Here in this case, I've I've used poles, fricondium, and cartilage. Um, so uh, as this is the suture that, that pulled your canal up. Yep. So taking the, um, the um, fricondium and the cartilage, put them in anteriorly nice with a small bit of a, a gel form inside, just from inside that they pull, help you to, um, to push the graft up for you. And I found that uh, after that, uh, there was a small defect in posteriorly. So I put a small piece of a cartilage in the pericondrium. I'm going to put it back now. Now let us see it. So one second, I'm putting back the graft, uh, the, the flap. In, and, and you can see that, that it's nicely there. So your, your graft is just that tip. Let us go back again. You can see that the graft is in place there. Yeah. Nicely there, nice there. Yeah. See? Completely inside, um, in place. And you, you, you overcome the harm that even easily with the scope. Yeah. Complete ceiling. Yeah. No, it's not. That's why the restricted yeah. access. Yeah. And then your jelly material, uh, the materials that you put inside. Nothing more than that. Said. I think so. Um, this is the first difficult case, uh, if we can say. We um, we can show another um, difficult case, which is a, a multiple tympanoscleritic patch. Um, so um, so the same principle elevation uh, of the flap, but in this case, uh, is. Once I, I reached the analyst, I found that there is like, like a small piece of chalky patches, like there is a small cartilage inside, but wasn't a cartilage. This is a tympanosclerotic patch there. See, it's that area. Yeah. So tympanosclerosis is, is a bit difficult um, because it tends to reoccur. reoccur. Um, the, the second thing is that usually affect the hearing. Uh, so is what what to do for it? Is it to completely remove? Yeah, it's a good idea. Sometimes it, yeah. So what I'm, I'm doing that the, you know, this vertical incision that I used to do with the plaster knife, um, if, if it's a bit difficult to use the plaster knife, I use the, the small uh, micro scissor. This is the called the tympani. You can see that the, this is the panosclerotic patch just over the the inkydistribute the, the joint as well. Yeah. So moving it around, uh, going around and around. Um, so I find it, it was blocking also the session too. So I'm gonna use one of the curved instruments. Yeah, so this is the, no, I, I've tried to use the, the regular cup one first. Yeah, but I couldn't. And then I've used the a curved, Cut and the second knife. 
take it out. Yep. See, still there was a small bit inside the the station tube and blocking the station tube. So the curved curved um, uh, inner smith is very very useful. Yeah. And trying to dissect between the handle and the long process, make sure that the the movement. Yeah, I can see the, the nice movement now uh, of the ossicles. Um, is there because it was everything was fixed with the with those thin panel um, that was cool. see in this case um i could if i'm planning to do uh, a fascia i can do it lateral to the or skills because you can see the handle is very nice there in 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 place um and a bed from a, 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 a skin so you can put it lateral but because I'm, I'm gonna put a cartridge, I, I put it medial to the oscill, uh, medial to the handle. Yeah. It's okay if you put lateral as well. And the same principle, um, which is putting back the um, the cartridge, uh, and that's it. So the flap back again. Yeah. And I think so that this was the reaching the end, discussing how we do our tympanoplasty, all of the steps that uh, could uh, uh, you can how you can do it, uh, and simply the summary of my. Um, talk or our talk is that it's a, a learning curve. You need to uh, do more. So um, when you pre perform more tympanic blast you, with the endoscope, you find that it won't be easy. Short time, it's an incision less, earlier recover, better visualization. And it's the the um, the first step to use the endoscope for other um, yeah, surgery. Yeah, that's fine. The big difference we have seen today and how the endoscopic approach giving us a good view and overcome most of restricted access cases and difficult anatomy. So I think it's, uh, it's it was a very good uh, um, uh, feedback today about uh, your procedure, Mr. Brain. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, it, most of those, um, uh, videos uh, or the complete videos are on the YouTube channel. It's an educational YouTube channel having uh, uh, more um, more videos regarding to the tympanoplasty, cholecystoma, uh, obstacular plasties, um, and I, I'm, it just it, you can get more from it. Um, and uh, any questions, we are happy to discuss. Thank you. Uh, this is the end of our recording uh, video uh, session. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Sherman uh, uh, and uh, for giving us this opportunity. Thanks, everyone.